timestamps can be found in the description. Continuing down the path of no film left unra uh, unrated this month, we have The Town That Dreaded Sundown. This is apparently a remake from an older film. It's a, it's a meta sequel to the 1976 film by the same name. This one's star studded. I say star studded. It has Gary Cole and Anthony, An Anthony Anderson in it. So there you go. Something for everybody. It's a thriller, mystery, horror bits because there's Jason Voorhees style stabbings. And it's also king to one of the worst kills i've seen in a very long time just because it had to reference the old movie anyways let's jump into the quick summary right now a mass maniac terrorizes the same small community where a murderer known as the phantom killer struck decades earlier it made 120000 in the box office whenever it released in 2014. I saw it pop up on Amazon's, like, top rated, which is shocking because it's not fantastic. Anyways, let's jump to the deep plot. Go ahead and take care of this. On October 31st of 2013, in the city of Texarkana, the local drive-in theater is hosting a Halloween annual showing of the 1976 film The Town That Dreaded Sundown based on the true stories of the Phantom Killer, who murdered several people in Texarkana in 1946. Corey Holland and Jamie Lerner leave to talk and kiss, but the Phantom kills Corey and tells Jamie, this is for Mary, make them remember. It pretty much starts off exactly like that. They It shows them driving up to a theater, showing an old, uh, an old movie on their TV screens, and it's kind of foreshadowing what's going to be happening in this one. It shows a couple of the kills there. Uh, she's not really feeling the movie. He asks if she wants to go somewhere else. They drive to a location that literally says, don't come here after sundown. And they say, this is fine. Pull over, park. Uh... She's glad he asked her out. He's asking what she has planned. She's applied to a couple of colleges. He says he's only playing football for a college sponsorship. They start to kiss and about to go a little bit further when she notices out of the corner of her eye a man in a sack mask kind of staring him out, staring them down as he kind of brings up. He's like, he's probably just a he's probably just a creeper. No, the second that she says that there's a guy here, you should go. Duh. But he begins to try to back it, back the car up when gunfire rains. His window gets shot out, and uh, he makes them both get out of the car. He tells her to turn around. They do really well with a camera shot where the lights of the back of the car are still projecting the shadows of these two people. Uh, the killer asks the boy to take his pants down which I guess they make do in the movie. I think it's a reference to an actual serial killer, and I can't think of his name. That would just find people parked in their cars and kill them. But I can't think of his name off the top of my head, and I'm too lazy to Google it. It's not worth my time. He ends up stabbing Corey as Jamie freaks out. He Jamie runs for her life. He kind of chases her for a bit and uh, pins her down on the ground saying, this is for Mary, make them remember. And she goes off. Uh, the police officers tell her not to tell anybody that this is going on, that we'll, we'll be in conducting our own investigations. Cool, cool. Let's jump to the next paragraph. Two days before Thanksgiving, Kendra Collins Thompson and her boyfriend, Daniel Torrens, are killed by the Phantom while having sex at a motel. The Phantom calls Jamie with Corey's phone, telling her, I'm going to do it again and again until you make them remember. She decides to tell her police escort, Deputy Foster. She has helped with the research into the killings by a former classmate, Nick Strain. Texas Ranger Lone Wolf Morales. Morales. Uh, he goes by Lone Wolf, and that is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. Takes over the investigation. Jamie receives an email from the Phantom and takes, takes it to the police. Nick asks Jamie to a vigil for the Phantom victims. There, a suicidal teenager shows up, dressed as the Phantom, and is killed, causing the townspeople to believe their murderer is actually dead. However, band members Johnny and Roy go to a junkyard to experiment sexually 
where they are attacked by the real Phantom. The Phantom reacts, recreates the trombone weapon from the original film. Johnny is shot to death, and Roy is stabbed. Let's jump to the first two kills. Hello, focus on me, camera. First two killings, Kendra and her boyfriend, Daniel. Uh, Daniel's just coming off a deployment for Thanksgiving break. They screw, like, their lives depend on it in this motel room. She asked him to go get her. Co- she asked him to go get her a cookie. Uh, shortly after the phantom killer takes his head and uses it as like a ramming for the window to throw it in the room. As he hops in, chases her. She jumps out of the second story window. I want to say second, maybe th- I think it's second because the motel. There's only really two floors. Jumps off, shows a gross leg break where it's just <laughs> gone. Uh, she tries to hop in her car, but she can't activate the clutch because that requires two feet, and she has one. She has one working feet. Foot? Foot. Uh, she gets slashed up in the car. The next one... Lone Wolf Morales, by the way. Uh, since, there, since this is a spiritual sequel, he's quoting the movie, but he's watching the movie, and he's realizing that he's quoted the movie which is weird but kind of funny uh shortly after uh two after the boy is shot wearing the mask who was just suicidal there is like a big town meeting thing and uh this they're pretty much saying we think the guy's been killed hooray hurrah drinks for everybody as two of the trombone and whatever players jazz players drive off to diddle each other to have sex or at least touch it i guess because it's really awkward how they bring it up but i guess it's both of them kind of seeing if they like being gay not really don't know just kind of strange writing style on that there is where we have the dumbest killing i've seen in a long time but it's because he's recreating a film from 1947 one starting to run away he bashes him over the head with a uh, with like a pipe or something he tapes one up top shoots the one down below who's like 30 30 yards away shoots him with a gun as he tapes a knife to a trombone and stabs him to death with it while playing and you can tell the actor's out of breath afterwards because he's trying to blow this thing while it's real, real bad. It's real, real bad. The next paragraph, uh, Morales and uh, Morales and Deputy Tillman visit Reverend Cartwright. They discovered that he sent Jamie an email. They discovered that he sent Jamie the email, but do not believe he is the Phantom. Jamie learns that Charles B. Pierce's son is still alive and lives in Texarkana. On Christmas Eve, Tillman and, Tillman and his date are killed by the Phantom. Jamie and Nick visit Charles Pierce Jr. and learn about Hank McGreedy, a sixth victim of the original Phantom whose story was forgotten. Pierce believes that the new vic- that the new Phantom is McCready's grandson because the family was angered that McCready's death was not remembered. McCready had a wife named Mary. Oh, the date that they're talking about here is a uh, freaking cotton from it's Gary Cole cotton from dodgeball as he picks a girl up at a bar takes her home things start to go down apparently the killer is only after sexual deviance because Gary Cole is uh getting getting a blowjob while the murderer is just sitting outside with a gun shoots him in the eye as the girl freaks out begins to run off she runs off into a hay field or a cornfield doesn't really matter and she's perfectly fine until she crawls around looks up at a scarecrow gets scared because it has a mask on it and gets stabbed to death there and those are the killings there hooray hurrah go go team uh, besides that yeah everything everything's all right there Lillian, Jamie's grandmother, finds out that Jamie was, act, uh, was accepted into college in California and, and decides to move there so Jamie can go to school. Jamie tells Nick she is leaving and they have sex. Nick is later killed by the Phantom while leaving town. Yeah, Nick is later killed by the Phantom. While leaving town, Jamie pulls into a gas station. There, the Phantom starts firing from a window, killing, killing Lillian and several others. Jamie runs into the old Union train station and finds Nick's body. 
She is shot down by arrows and confronted by two phantom killers. <gasps> One is Deputy Forrester, and the other is Corey, who faked his death. Foster, Foster is McCree's grandson. Corey tries to convince Jamie that they are the same, the Tex Arcana, that Tex Arcana trapped them into roles they hated. She brags, he brags about how everyone will know what he did and decides to kill her, but is killed by Forrester, who plans to kill Jamie and blame the killings on her and Corey. Jamie finds the gun and shoots Foster, but his body is never found. Jamie leaves Tex Arcana and moves on with her life. In the end, the Phantom Shadow is seen stalking Jamie. That's pretty much everything. Like, I cut out for a second. Like, legit, I don't even remember him killing the grandmother at all. So, maybe I fell asleep for a moment. But the film's not bad. It's just cringy because it's remaking an old film and it acknowledges that throughout the entirety of the film. But this will be a really short one today because I'm trying to get out as many of these things as possible to keep up with my track. I'll decide the final score after going through all the other things. I think the plot of the film's good. I think I can give it a seven. It's a very whodunit and lots of red herrings throughout it. And they do a really good job of suppressing any or putting a red herring out there, let it stew for a second, and then immediately kill it. Because <laughs> Gary Cole, that's, I'm not saying his name right. Yeah, Gary Cole acts like a dick throughout most of the movie, so you think it's him. The Reverend, Reverend acts like a dick, so you're assuming that it's maybe one of his patrons or something like that. So lots of red flags, so it does interesting bits with that. So I'm not saying who wins because this, or who it is, because it's point, it's score setting score time now so i can't really discuss it because people clicked here for that reason uh i think the plot itself can have a seven i think it's an interesting story that can be told well that has been told decently uh scares there's a couple of good jump scares good kills throughout it uh i think it can have a six for a couple of good jump scares and some some clever kills and then a really 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 dumb one that they had to do because it's recreating the old one and it's literally known for a trombone killing scene uh make it a five it's a five there so a seven and a five our final one is the threat the looming threat of the phantom killer is interesting and the fact that you don't know who it is makes it all the better and they do well with it so the six, a five, another five, seven, five, five is fine. That would make it 17 divided three ways. It's going to be a percentage that I would have to figure out. Do I recommend this for newbies? Not like young people, but I think it's a thriller, so it's fine. Like there's going to be gore in it, so not for children, but I think people our age can handle it. It's perfectly fine. Nothing too gross, whatever. I say our age. I'm dirt. Um, do I recommend this movie? Sure. Like it's fine. Like it's not going to be at the top of my recommend of my recommendations, but it's it's a suitable movie. Um the overall score is where I'm kind of having a problem. I'm going unfortunately I'm going through my old list and trying to figure out if I enjoyed it more than something else. And I shouldn't do it. I should take it as its own. So I think The House That Dreaded Sundown can have I think it can have I think it can have a six. I think a six is fine for this. It's not scary. I think the film is just decent. And I think some of the kills are good enough. The mystery is still solid. So six and a half is where I'll leave it at. It's a short one because I got a lot to do. And today's a busy day. I hope everybody has a great day. Take care. Stay scared. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. See ya. Goodbye.